Last time on Total Drama The Top 100, it was the most tense episode yet as nine contestants went into the brunch of disgustingness and only Lightning was able to come out. We lost Lori, Spud, B, Sam, Gwen, Miles, Nichelle, and finally Stephanie in the tiebreaker. Not only that, but because Lori chickened out first, the Amber Scorpions needed to say goodbye, and they were disbanded. But this episode isn't going to be merge challenges, no, we are going to a new place entirely, the film lot. Chris calls all the campers to the dock of shame, and once there he tells them good news, they've all survived the start of the game. Now they will go to the location of Total Drama Action, where they will go through those amazing challenges once again. Harold in Confessional says that this is really good for him, this was his best season, so he thinks that things will go even smoother than they've gone already. They're all transferred to the film lot where Chris tells them that the next challenge will begin shortly. They must elect two members to compete, but be warned, those two competitors will be immune from elimination if your team loses. Also, whichever two teams win will be able to get a mighty reward for next week as well as choosing who goes to elimination this week. Finally, it's not Monster Crash, but Alien Resurrection. Keep that in mind when choosing your participants. Alright, see you then. Bridget says she'd love to try the challenge. She wasted the last time she did it because Jeff was there. Scarlet says that may be too big of a risk. I mean, what if Jeff goes as well, thinking the exact same thing? Bridget says that's true, but she can handle herself now. She's not the same Bridget. Dave says it's whatever, they don't have a target on their backs, he thinks. I mean, who would want them to go to elimination over any of the other teams? Bowie says that he does have a point, actually. Ripper says that they have to let him do this, he's seen the Alien movies hundreds of times. Scarlet says that it's more than just watching the movies, but Sanders tells her to give him a chance. He actually wants to participate, might as well let him. Scarlet says fine. Scarlet and Confessional says that this is definitely not the all-star lineup she wanted. Damien asks if they can elect Silent Crickets to go to elimination if they win. Scarlet says that, with all due respect, Mary probably isn't top priority to be eliminated. Damien says that's what she thinks. Axel says that her and Mickey will do it, and Devin says that with all due respect, it's about time she lets someone else compete. Axel asks why they've been winning when she pulls the weight, and Devin says that it's just that. Axel says she gets it. He wants them to lose so they can vote her off. Well, tough luck, because she's going to be immune when she competes. Beth says that it's her choice in the end, and she thinks it should go to a vote. Who thinks that Axel should compete? Axel, Mickey, Amy, Sadie, and finally Heather raise their hands. Carrie asks what Heather is doing, and Heather says, What? I agree with Axel. Y'all can't do what she can. Beth says, Fine, she can compete, but Mickey will not. Devin says, Fine, he will do it then. Axel tells him not to slow her down, and Devin says not to get too close. Dawn asks Scott if they can talk, and Scott says, Sure, just don't pickpocket him or anything like that. Dawn tells him that his aura has been shifting slowly, and Scott says he knows that. Junior has been making him soft, she needs to help him. Dawn asks why he would possibly want to be his old self, and Scott says that if he doesn't have his edge, he will be another victim like you, B, Mike, any of those losers. When you get soft, people manipulate you. Dawn tells him that he just needs to stay mentally sharp. Together, they could do great things for the team. Junior comes over and says that he must have met Dawn, she's really cool. Scott says that's great, Junior. In confessional, Scott says he can't believe that Psycho Psychic already talked to Junior. Well played. Scott says alright, he'll consider an alliance, but don't tell anyone about this, especially not Joe. Topher asks Lightning if they should bring Dawn into the alliance, and Lightning says, Are you kidding? She stole my protein powder. Topher asks if he even watched the show, and Lightning says, Nope. I won my season, why would I have to rewatch it? You don't watch game-winning film. Scott says he will elect Lightning and himself. Joe says in confessional that she's not dumb, if they lose, she will be the one going home, or that's what they think. Leonard welcomes Ella, the fair maiden, to the team, and Ella says that it's an honor to meet them all. Lorenzo says that she's beautiful, and Taylor says that she's nowhere near as beautiful as her, right? Lorenzo says that it's a toss-up, and Taylor says whatever, he doesn't know beauty when he sees it. Tom asks Ella where she got such a cute dress, and Ella says she made it herself. Tom says that he can definitely learn a thing or two from her. How about they design her outfit together for tonight's game night? Ella says she'd love to. Ezekiel tells Z that something is missing, and Z says that it sure is. It's like if his mango, strawberry, watermelon, banana flavored soda didn't have one of those vegetables in it. He takes a sip and spits it out, saying that it's so gross. Ezekiel says that he kind of misses Gwen. 
Chase asks Priya what the plan will be for elimination, and Priya asks what he means. Chase says that she can't play dumb, they know she's at the bottom of the pecking order. Priya says that honestly she hasn't come up with a solution yet, and Chase asks if she's just nervous to talk to people and that's why she's training instead. Priya says what? No way I'd be nervous about talking to people, I talk to people all the time like you and uh, Caleb. Chase says that he's going out of his comfort zone, she needs to do it as well. Priya says that he's right. Priya goes to Ezekiel and asks if they can talk, and Ezekiel says, Good news, you're going in today's challenge as well as Chase. He's seen how good the two of you have worked, and he'd love to see more of it. Priya says that's great, and Chase asks if that was really his idea, and Ezekiel says, Honestly, no, it was Ella's idea because she thought you two felt left out after last week's funeral. Duncan says it would be the right call to put him up since he was the closest to winning last time, and Eva says that it just sounds like he lost to her. Anui and Crimson will go because they can be the sneakiest group here. Duncan says whatever. In confessional, Eva says that Julia clued her in on Duncan's alliance. If they lose, she's picking the winner's alliance apart. Julia says in confessional that two things will happen. One, we lose and they realize that me and MacArthur are finalists as well, so they will allow us to join in. Or they just are too pig-headed to realize it and Duncan gets eliminated. Jeff says that he knows he usually asks if others would like to compete, but he would like to participate in this week's challenge, and Anne Maria says whatever. Jock says that he would like to go as well, and Jeff says that he's seen what Jock can do. He would love to see him compete. Brody says that this is great, the guys alliance will have way more members with Harold on the team. Kitty says no way, Harold makes it even for us again, they need him. Harold says to calm down, he will not pick a side, he is like the old nomads, he will not fight until the time is right. Kitty asks what that's supposed to mean, and Emma says that it means that Harold won't pick a side until they lose, and Kitty says actually, fair point. Justin asks Harold how he's been, and Harold says he can't complain. It feels like he's been on the most teams so far, at this point he won't even unpack all his stuff, and Justin says that's great, you're competing as well as Scary Girl. Scary Girl cheers happily at the news. Ryan says he has to give her some credit, she is the best fit for this, she will scare the other contestants away from the goal. Izzy asks who'd like to compete, and Rodney says he doesn't care as long as he can spend time with his Mary Berry. Tyler asks DJ if he's like that with Lindsay, and DJ says not nearly as obnoxious. Sean says that it's great that they are getting along, but they have a challenge to win. Mary says, oh right, well how about we put up Izzy and Sean? Izzy says that she didn't want to be pretentious by nominating herself, but she loves that idea. Sean says, great, I have to spend time with Izzy. Izzy says, I know, right? This will be fun. Chris welcomes them to the next challenge. Today, you will have to find eggs and bring them to the drop zone. If you can make it there with your eggs intact, you will win immunity for your team and the reward. However, if you are caught by Chef or your egg breaks, you will be eliminated from the challenge. The round starts and Ripper asks Axel how she's been and Axel says that she's been great. Just babysitting, you know? Ripper says, tell me about it. This team would be lost without me. Bridget clears her throat and Ripper says, oh right, well gotta run Axel. Axel grabs his arm and says not without a goodbye kiss, and Devin says come on, we don't have time for this. Ripper and Axel begin making out and Devin says fine, he will win this for them. Jeff shouts out to Bridget and Bridget says no way, Jeff? Jeff says that it's great to see her, as leaders we don't really interact as much, huh? Bridget says seriously, I've been dying to see you again. Jack says that this is really touching, but they have a challenge to win, and Jeff says, Oh right, sorry Bridge, as much as I'd love to make out with you like last time, I kinda wanna try this time. And Bridget says she agrees before stepping over Axel and Ripper. Bridget in confessional says she would have at least liked a goodbye kiss as well, and Jeff says in confessional that he misses Bridge already. God, why didn't he just throw the challenge? Chase asks Priya if making out is part of the challenge, and Priya says not that she remembers. Just hold on, she's thinking. Suddenly, Chef jumps out and Priya pushes Chase out of the way before telling him to run and Chase says he can't just leave her and Priya says to just go win the challenge for them. Chase leaves and Priya says she's wanted to face off against Chef for a while. Priya actually manages to hit Chef over the head with a pipe, but a sprinkler goes off covering her in slime. Priya says, oh man, so close, and Chef says she'll get it next time. Just keep your eyes on the surroundings. Izzy runs by while saying yeah like her. Chef tells her to get back here and runs after her. Sean asks Priya if she saw what direction they went, and Priya says that they went that way, and Sean says he will go the other way then. Lightning says that this is stupid, why doesn't this place have directions? Scott says it wouldn't be a maze if there were directions, shut idiot. 
Lightning says that he's gonna punch his way through this place, and Scott says it's not a good. Lightning punches a hole in a wall, and Chef's blaster is on the other end, and he shoots Lightning. Scott begins running, but trips, and Chef blasts Scott. Jeff and Jock say they found the egg room, and Scary Girl stands behind them, and Jeff asks if Jock feels that menacing aura before Jock tells them to run, and so they run while Scary Girl chases them. Harold grabs an egg and says that this was too easy before suddenly Chase snatches it from him saying finders keepers. Sean rushes in with Bridget and Bridget says there's plenty of eggs here, he didn't need to steal one. Suddenly Chef runs in and shoots all three of them. Ennui, Crimson, and Chase are standing outside when Chris says this is his favorite part and Chase says cool as Chris drops the nukes. All of them take cover as it lands. None of them seem to have been hit or have an egg, but Chase asks if they really thought he would let the egg be at risk and he pulls one out, while Anwi and Crimson seems to pull theirs out of thin air. Chris says that since they are the only three that have gotten the eggs, that means they've won despite all odds. Alright, get cleaned up so we can start the fun part. Chris says that it was tough, but drowning mosquitoes and excited ants are safe. Priya tells him good job and Chase says he just listened to her advice and ran. Chris then says that it must be a tough choice to elect a team, but Anwi says it isn't. Hopping stink bugs. Chris says, wow. How about you, Chase? Emma says that he wouldn't send her team to elimination, would he? Chase says not to worry, he'd never put her in danger. He's sending mediocre mealworms to elimination. Emma says that's her team, and Chase says, wait, really? Were you recently swapped there, or...? Beth says, no, she's been on that team all along. How are you so awful at everything? Chase says awful at everything, I won the challenge for my team if you would recall. Chris says enough, hopping stink bugs, mediocre mealworms, get ready for elimination. Before elimination, Beth asks Carrie and Devin who they should vote for, and they say they should vote for Heather. She revealed her true colors today by siding with Axel. Beth says true, she needs to go since Axel can't. Justin goes to Dakota and Emma and tells them that he's gonna honor the deal they made last week. Chris welcomes the team to the first Gilded Chris ceremony. Justin, you know how this goes. Everyone else, cast a vote on your device. Hopefully you don't pull a Lindsay. Dakota asks what that means and Harold says she voted for herself. Chris then tells the mediocre mealworms they can vote as well. Alright, the votes are in. For hopping stink bugs, the ones safe are... Justin. Brick. Kitty. Wayne. Emma, Scary Girl, Ryan, Harold, and finally, Brody. Dakota says, what? This can't be. Chris tells her to let him finish. Brody, you're out. Dakota says, oh, phew. Brody asks what happened, and Wayne says that they must have gotten enough votes somehow. Brody says that's a major bummer. Bye, guys. He leaves, and Chris says that with that out of the way, it's time for mediocre mealworms. Axel, Carrie, Mickey, Emma, Devin, Amy, Sadie, and finally, Heather. You're safe. Beth says, wait, what? She has her leader token, actually, to give herself an extra vote, and Chris says, yeah, that won't work. It's six to three. Beth says, what? That many? Chris says, yep. Can't believe the action winner is out first. Goodbye, Beth. Heather in Confessional says that Axel being in charge is better for her game in the long run by a long shot. She stood up for Axel and she knows Axel will appreciate that. All she had to do was tell Emma that the others were thinking of voting her out and she was on her side and Amy was really easy enough to sway and of course she has Sadie around her finger. Sorry Beth, looks like I outsmarted you again. Breaking Confessional says that something's fishy about all this, I mean the guys alliance easily had majority, yet somehow the girls side got an additional two votes. Harold is easy enough, but someone else flipped. Man, this is making his head hurt. The votes are as follows for Hopping Stink Bugs. Justin, Dakota, Kitty, Emma, Ryan, and Harold voted for Brody for no greater reason than to keep the gender war going. Brick, Wayne, Brody, and Scary Girl voted Dakota to keep the gender war going. Votes are as follows for Mediocre Mealworms. Beth, Carrie, and Devin voted Heather for being the biggest threat. Axel, Mickey, and Heather voted for Beth to put Axel into the leader spot. Amy voted Beth because Heather wanted her to. And Sadie voted for Beth because it was what Amy wanted. Finally, Emma voted for Beth because she thought Beth was going to vote for her due to her relationship with Chase. And that's that for Total Drama The Top 100 Episode 15. What did you think? Question of the week. What team do you envision disbanding next? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below and I'll see you all next time on Total Drama The Top 100.